Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. Today, I'd like to give you guys a little bit of perspective on all the statistics that we're hearing about COVID-19. As of May 22nd, 2020, Texas has 55,348 cases reported. Texas also has 1,519 fatalities reported so far from COVID-19. Those statistics are so hard to put into perspective and to understand. So I'd like to give you guys a little bit more information behind the statistics to help us understand how this data specifically applies to each one of us. One interesting thing to note is that even though over 1,500 fatalities have been reported from COVID-19, only 490 of those have been specifically investigated. I don't really understand why there's so much delay, but I'd like to give you guys a breakdown by age of those 490 people. I made a very rudimentary chart, but I'd still think it's interesting to help us understand the information. In this chart, it shows Texas deaths from confirmed COVID-19 by age as of May 24, 2020. And I've split it up into three columns, age, number of deaths, and percentage of deaths. As this chart shows, the percentage of deaths greatly increases as your age increases. 70% of deaths are from patients over 65 years of age, and especially over 80 years of age. And looking at this chart, we can tell that in patients 80 and older, 40% of the deaths from COVID-19 have occurred in that age range. Let's put that into perspective with the other two leading causes of death, including cardiovascular disease and cancer. I have statistics from 2015 for the state of Texas, and in that year, 82,000 people died from either cardiovascular disease or cancer. Breaking that down per daily death, I simply divided that number by 365, and the number of deaths per day from cardiovascular disease and cancer was 225 people. I also want to share important data about hospitalizations. I know hospitalizations are really the key data point for COVID-19 infections, because just because you have COVID-19, that does not mean that you need to be hospitalized. And we put people on protocols such as social distancing to help eliminate the rush of patients that are hospitalized. As of May 24, 2020, lab confirmed COVID-19 hospitalizations in Texas are 1,572. This seems relatively stable. There was a high of 1,888 hospitalizations on May 5th in Texas, but for the most part, that number has remained relatively stable. This is good because even though we have more confirmed cases of COVID-19, we're not currently seeing an increase in the number of hospitalizations from those positive cases. Furthermore, Texas currently has 6,000 ventilators available and about 17,000 hospital beds available. I just share that data to provide some reassurance. In the end, I'd like to give three things to consider when you hear statistics on the news. The number of cases is increasing. However, the number of cases is increasing because the testing is increasing. I know that in my city, all elective surgeries require a COVID-19 test before surgery can be done. Therefore, more asymptomatic patients are being tested. A big data point is that I would ask everyone to look at the hospitalizations in your state. That data is easily available online. And even though cases may be increasing in your area, I would ask you to look at the hospitalization rate. Is that rate also increasing? And lastly, age is such a big factor with this disease. As I mentioned before, 70% of the deaths in Texas are from people ages 65 and older. I'm gonna leave you guys with three common sense strategies that you can use for takeaways. Number one, if you're age 65 and older, you need to continue to take precautions. This means frequent hand washing, wearing a mask, and social distancing. Everyone else that's younger, we need to protect our elders, at least for now. That means we need to stay away from them, especially if we're not maintaining social distancing or if we're going about our normal daily lives and in interacting with more people on a daily basis. 
These strategies will be able to be lifted when we have prophylactic or early treatments that have been proven to be effective against COVID-19. We simply don't have those yet, and we're also waiting for a vaccine. So my recommendation would be, if you love someone that's age 65 and older, please protect them by encouraging them to continue to stay in their home as much as possible, maintain social distancing, and wash their hands frequently, and wear a mask when going out in public. For everyone else, I'd like you to look at the data and see if the data applies to your age group, and I would like to provide reassurance. Thanks again for joining me.